Hey everyone, welcome back to another MetaSound tutorial for Unreal Engine 5. In this tutorial, we're just going to look at how to communicate between blueprints into actual MetaSounds. So I've got, uh, you know, I've got the setup here really quickly. So today, I just have the speed coming in from the player pawn. We're getting uh, speed based on the velocity here. And uh, we're sending it using this set float parameter node. This is the primary thing that we're talking about today in order to send data into another into a meta sound. So if I look at the, at the meta sound here, uh, we have an input called pawn speed. And on here, the name of our set float parameter is also called pawn speed. So finally, we reference uh, where that meta sound, in this case, it's actually a meta sound inside an audio component. We reference where that needs to be set and then what the data is uh, that's going to be received here. So basically what's happening is we just have a really quick, like. Uh, pseudo noise system as the player speeds up we'll hear kind of a swooshing sound uh, eventually this will become a, a dynamic interactive wind system but for now we're just going to demonstrate quickly how to send uh, player data into a meta sound in order to make interactive audio systems so we're going to get started making this from scratch uh, this this um, meta sound i'll keep as is uh, this tutorial is more about the communication aspect so the only thing to note here is that in order to receive the input I had to create a new input using this little button here, name it pawn speed, uh, and I've, I've made it the same type. In this, in this case, it's a float, um, which is, you know, it's just a decimal value. Uh, and I also use this little uh, widget option just so I could see the, uh, the value or play with it inside the meta sound. So I'm just going to get this effect as the player speeds up. All right, so let's get started. Uh, if I, I'm just going to make a really quick new folder, I like to be organized. Here we have audio, and inside the audio, I'm going to make a new blueprint class. This one being an actor. So the idea here is I'm going to be able to place this blueprint blueprint class into the world, and there will be a meta sound uh, audio component uh, as part of that blueprint. And so our wind system will just immediately be in the world, including the meta sound and all the logic that's needed. So let's just call this here a blueprint. Uh, it's an ambient sound and it's going to be our wind system. Uh, so opening that up and going over to the event graph, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just get the, the speed from the player. So if I get the player pawn and then I uh, get, uh, I just get velocity or something like this. Yeah, get the velocity. And from that vo velocity vector, I want to get the length of the vector to get the actual speed. This will give me the, uh, the decimal value here. And finally, uh, let's just give it a quick shot and see what's up. Uh, let's just see what kind of data we're getting here. Uh, and in order to drive that, I'm going to use the event tick. So as the game is playing, we're constantly updating that, that value. Oh, not the duration. I actually want the actual value. So let's give that a quick shot. I'll compile and save that. And I will just pop this blueprint into the world, this actor here. And so you can see I've got zero. And as I move forward, our speed goes up to around 600, it looks like. It looks like it can also go past that, depending on if I'm jumping up to seven something. So that's great. OK, so let's just say between zero and 600 is kind of our, our main velocity for, for running or whatever. Uh, I'm just going to map that range and clamp it. Let's say from zero to 600 is our input range. And we're just going to make that a, a sort of zero to one normalized value here. That's all great. All right, so the, then this is where the, the, um, that node that comes in set float parameter that I was talking about. So I notice sometimes it doesn't show up unless we take off context sensitive. So let's just try set float parameter. And here we are. And if you hover over these two, we have one is target is audio parameter controller interface. And this one is audio component. And what we're going to be doing is adding an audio component to this blueprint so that it's already in the, in the level when we pop that blueprint in. So in this case, we want set float parameter and let's choose the one with the audio component as the target. So that's great. So, so we're almost there. So if I pop this speed value in, that's going to be our input into the meta sound. We need this name to be the same as what that input was. So we had it named pawn speed. Just to verify, let's have a quick look at that. 
at that uh, that input value. So here we have pond speed. That's the same input name. Uh, from then on, we're now missing a reference to what meta sound we're trying to speak with, as well as to continually update that uh, that that float value. So I'm just going to update it with our tick here. And finally, um, for a reference, we're going to add a audio component to the scene. So here I have audio. It's already going to pre-select the meta sound that I want, actually. But if it doesn't, uh, we would just select the meta sound over here in the sound. You can, you can go find it. All right, so that's all fun and great. Let's finally just get that target in there. So we should be able to target now our, this meta sound with this input using this data. So let's give that a quick shot, compile it, save it, check if we're already in the world. We had already dropped that in earlier. Let's give that a quick shot. Here's my speed over there on the left. And you can hear that the meta sound noise, the, the bandpass filter, responds to my speed as I move in game. So that's a pretty basic setup. Um, obviously, you can see how this will get more complicated as we build better and better uh, procedural uh, sound effects. This is obviously not very convincing, and the, the actual meta sound may need a lot of work, but this demonstrates how we can communicate between our blueprints and get some of the logic that we might need from the game in order to communicate with our procedural sound effects or interactive music systems. So I hope that's helpful, and I will see you in the next tutorial.